Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Flyfish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we'll be tying a little uh, leech pattern. Uh, I call it the A&W, um, and the reason is because it's kind of a root beer leech. Uh, I call it the A&W because it's uh, got the, the uh, root beer colored uh, dubbing, and then it's got an orange head like the root beer mascot. So that's why I call it the A&W. So let's go. So starting off today, we have a uh, one eighth. Um, uh, brass bead, you can use tungsten if you'd like, uh, in orange. I'm using a Hens BL254N in a size 10. I will be using some Semperfly Classic Waxed in rust. I will be using some Semperfly Hollow Tinsel in copper for as an underbody, because it'll show through a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, I'll be using some Arizona Semi Seal, Halloween they call the color. It's kind of an orangey, rusty kind of uh, color. Um, and I'm going to mix that with some of uh, Stu Thompson's um, dark water dubbing. Um, it's a nice, really soft, like uh, kind of a cream color. I mix that a bit. Um, and it gives it a, a, just a, a little bit of a different look. Um, so, And uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a really good fly for me over the years. At times, uh, just like all flies, at times they're great. At other times they're not, right? So... Um, but I found this one to be very, very good at low light situations, especially. So, so first thing I like doing is I like just putting on a little bit of uh, of a tail. So I'm just going to take the Arizona semi seal and take just a little pinch out, and I'm going to stack it in the same direction. So I'm just going to pull it apart, stack it, pull it apart, stack it. Just want these fibers to be going the same direction. So. I don't want a huge tail, so about like that. And I'm just going to pull a little bit of the longer stragglies here out. Okay, and then I'm going to tie that in right to the front. Just make sure that's lengthwise good. Yep. Yeah. I want about one and a half times the length of the body. I'll come back up. Just get rid of that. Don't get throw that away because you can use that in your dubbing loop later if you want. Okay, so that's one. Next, I am going to make a dubbing loop here. Let's get that in there. Now I'm just going to keep my loop material out of the way just for now. Then I'm going to tie on my underbody. So this is that copper hollow tinsel from Semperfly. Just put that on all the way to the front. Just build up just a little bit there. So now I'm just going to do... Again, this does really doesn't matter if, you're, if there's a little bit of a gap. I mean, try not to, but if you do, it really doesn't matter at all. You won't, uh, you won't be able to see it anyway, most of it. You're only going to see the odd flash through the body. So, cut that off. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little pinch of my Arizona Semi Seal. And I'm going to take a little pinch of that Stu Thompson's uh, Dark Water Dubbing in that cream. See how this has got really nice and fluffy underneath? It's got some really nice under fur. So, but again, I, I want to stack this stuff. I want to get these fibers going in the same direction. So, now I'm going to take about half of that what I took out because it was way too much. Okay, and now I'm going to pick just, so now I've got it sandwiched between and I'm going to start pulling it apart and stacking it. Okay, this will, not only will it stack it, but it will also mix it a bit. I don't want this overly mixed, but I definitely want to make sure that I've got it stacked in the same direction. And I usually can tell by the looks of it, that's a little bit on the heavy side of the cream, so I'm going to go a little bit more of the, of the, uh, Halloween, Arizona Semi Seal. So 
So it's just, uh, it ta does take some time. Usually I have this all done ahead of time, but I wanted to show you guys how to do it, right? Especially those that have never done it. Just make sure when you're blending, just always try to pull in the same direction. It lines up the fibers, right? So, okay. So now once that's done, I'll take a clump of that. That's probably enough for three or four flies there that I just did. Take my dubbing loop that I made. I'm going to wax this dubbing loop. I want this stuff to stick well. And then I'm going to take my dubbing and I can see which direction that majority of the fibers are. So that's the direction I want going across my uh, across my dubbing loop. Now I'm going to pull this open. Spread this material out. So it's nicely spread. Give her a good spin. Give her one more good spin, keeping my bobbin out of the way. You don't want to overspin this because it is it's a, it is just a regular a regular thread and it will break. Um, just like any other regular thread, it's not a nano or a GSP. So just pull out any of the fibers that are loose, but I also want these to be co to spike out. So there you go. So now I'm going to do one full, once I get there, there it is, just starting, one full wrap right at the back. Then I'm going to just slightly open up a bit, almost like I'm palmering. Just slightly. And then one good full turn right behind the bead there. So that's done just nip off your dubbing loop really make sure this is tied in really nicely here then I'm going to take some of my Sally Hansen's because it's hard to get it in after so just do it and I like doing two sets of whip finishes on pretty well all my leeches that I especially ones that I'm brushing out hard which I will be with this one so there's one set I'm just gonna give it just a tad more of the Sally's and do another set of at least three to three to four turn whip finish with those Sally's on both both of them. Sally's head cement, crazy glue, whatever you like using. I just like Sally's because it's it works well and it's cheap. So, so fly is done tying, but now the important part is pulling all this material out. You want this to be nice and buggy. So now I've got my just a, just a popsicle stick with some Velcro in the end. I really like using the popsicle stick on these little leeches because I can get in between the, the gape of the hook here. she wrote that's it that's the finished A&W like I said it's a fairly simple fly but it's got that that like I said that that reddish brown from the uh, Arizona semi seal from this Halloween that orangey brown and then it's got a little bit of that cream kicking in there and and this air this um, dark water dubbing if you take a close look it's got all kinds of little flash in it and stuff so that's mixed in here as well right um, it just it really stands out once it's in the water once this gets wet it really stands out really nice it flows really nice it's all dubbing so it's uh, it's an easy one to tie but also when this gets wet you can just see barely see some of that underbody sticking out and every once in a while when this is wet and this flows and stuff um, you can you can see that underbody I mean I could pull it out even more if I wanted um, let's just see if I can get even more just so you guys can see it better but believe me once this is wet this will You'll see that underbody from time to time, and that's that's why I put it in. I, is it necessary? Probably not. You probably don't have to. I just really like it. I like the uh, final effect from it. So, yeah. Hope you guys like that one. This, like I said, this one's been in my repertoire now for in my box for quite a few years. Um, I didn't use 
the dark water dubbing uh, uh, until just about a year ago, until I got introduced to it by Stu Thompson himself. Um, what I've always been using is the, uh, uh, the Calabatus 10 from Stillwater. It's this one here. That's what I've been using, but I find that the fibers in this are pretty short. Um, so they give you a bit of an underbody, like a buildup, but they don't give you these longer fibers like like you can see here in uh, in this one, right? With the dark water dubbing, it's got slightly longer fibers. Not very much longer, but longer. So, alrighty, guys. Hope you guys liked that one. Uh, if you did, give her a thumbs up. Um, giveaway's coming pretty quick here. We're almost at two thousand. I've got uh, I got some hens materials. I've got some Semperfly swag. I got some Renome scissors and swag. Um, I've got some flies to give away. I got all kinds of stuff to give away to you guys, and a copy of my book, books. Um, yeah. So, uh, and don't forget, uh, pre-release for my first book on uh, Kindle is uh, um, due. I think it's December sixth. It it comes out, but it's out for pre-release right now. Um, so that's for uh, this. You know what? I'm just going to switch over to the other camera. It's easier. That's for this book. Uh, it's a freshman fly fisher's uh, beginner's guide. Uh, so that's I actually just before I did this video, finished uh, doing all my editing um, for it to be uh, ready for Kindle. And then uh, in the new year, my second book, my insect guide, will be up on Kindle as well sometime in the new year. I don't know when. Uh, that that one's going to take a bit, a bit longer with all the pictures and stuff. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you did, thumbs up. Uh, if you subscribed, awesome. Thanks. If you haven't, consider doing so. Pass on the word. Let your buddies know. All right. Thailand's everyone.